All right, uh, greetings family. This is Bomani Taemba, and welcome to our conference call for Africa tours for Ghana, November 2018, May 2019, and South Africa, November 2019, along with the uh, additional option tours for uh, Zambia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe. Our conference call details uh, were sent out via email and also have them in this uh, newsletter uh, which I sent out uh, recently. But all of that is just to give an idea of this uh, general details of where all of the information is and going over it is just going over it for the record. All right. All right. And for those who just started uh, listening to our, our conference call, uh, this is just something we do every month and it's just an update of all the relevant things dealing with um, whatever is the tour that's coming up on. So I'll go through um, all these different things uh, in the next uh, one hour. Uh, for everyone who have questions, if you could just jot down your questions. And when it comes time to, you know, for when we open things up for questions, uh, press star six uh, to unmute yourself, uh, give your name and where you're calling from, and uh, what journey that you're traveling on. Everyone, all of the details I'm going to talk about can be found on our website, Africa for the Africans.org. And once you uh, once you're on our website, uh, the first thing that uh, you see is this uh, big banner, uh, red, black, green, and gold, Africa for the Africans Tours and Investment. And for those of you, if um, you're on your desktop or laptop. It depends on which browser you're using. If you don't have a flash uh, install or updated, um, you won't see the MP3 player on the left, and you won't see the slideshow in the middle of the page underneath the banner. So those are all flash-based. Uh, so once you're on there, you, you hear the audio of the different songs that you can change and adjust. And the slideshow is my last presentation that showed the 2004 2016 journey of all the countries I've been to and the highlights and this is mainly Ghana and this is a collection of photos and next one I'll add would be from 2004 to 2018 so that uh, showcase um, the 14 years I've traveled on African continent nine different countries uh, Ghana Togo Benin Senegal the Gambia Egypt uh, Ethiopia Kenya and South Africa, and that span of this uh, experience uh, is the experience I have on the African continent. Uh, I've been traveling for the last 20 years internationally, six our continent, been to 33 different countries, and just gained this vast knowledge and this experience on just moving around and just doing it in the simplest way and the easiest way. And most people that travel with us are people that. Um, are still new to this international world of traveling and everything, so we just have information and detail in its simplicity form and it's not to offend anyone um, and most of the details we have on the site but it's just to go over everything that way regardless of the travel experience or background everything is clear for everyone and we can all flow on the same page from getting ready for the journey getting visas meeting up at the airport uh, getting on the tour bus getting set up at the hotel um, going around the country and being safe and being organized and all those things. So every aspect of that uh, we go through. And even if you're ready to live and do business in the country, and you know, get your you know, you know, get your land and get other things going, you know, we're there with you. It's just a future that we're dedicated to, which is to connect our brothers and sisters from the African nest with the African continent. So that is uh, just a showcase of that experience. And relatively, if you just want to see the full photo galleries. You can always go to the YouTube pages. You'll see the link on the left side of the page and on every uh, email. And if you want to see the relative videos, you can go to the YouTube channel uh, based on the links that we have on the website and on the emails. And then you can just view the details of this documented information of just traveling to Africa, uh, being at the airport, uh, being in the country at, different, at every single different sites, business conference, being at the hotel, having certain uh, conversation and discussion. That's Basically, just bringing as much in detail experience for you, um, for whether you know Ghana is more documented, or as we begin to just connect back with other countries, 
which you know, no, which maybe I didn't have as much success with in the beginning, and have a better formula for for it now. I'm trying to showcase more more of that, but uh, the Ghana experience that we have is what you see mostly. But you also see Ethiopia and Brazil, which is the last two countries I've been been to outside of our Ghana, and then also Togo and Benin. Light information. Yeah, and once you're on the uh, the site, um, everything is basic on the main menu. So. Once you're on the main menu, you'll see uh, Ghana tour November 2018, Ghana tour May 2019, and you see South Africa, Zambia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe tour November 2019. I still have the Brazil up there, and uh, we'll work on removing it this uh, so I'm gonna forget to remove that. But those are the countries that we're going to. So tonight, as we talk about uh, South Africa, uh, once you click on the link, it opens up. It gives you a tour overview. South Africa, Zambia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe, along with general terms, itinerary, and South Africa visa clarification, then visa for Zambia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe. So, and the reason why it says South Africa visa clarification is because you don't need a visa, but in some people's situation, they may need a visa. So we just have the documentation that's that's on the website of, of the embassy for clarification. Uh, and you know, so basically, if you have an American passport, you don't need a visa. So the first thing I want to do is click on the tour overview to just give clarity of those of us that are traveling with us to um, on the South Africa journey for November 2019. All right, so once I click on overview, overview basically you give the breakdown of the tour. So it is uh, November 22nd to December 4th. So South Africa portion uh, November 20th to the 30th, uh, 3,300. The South Africa accommodations and flights on Delta Airlines from Atlanta, Georgia to Johannesburg, Cape Town, and round trip again from South African on South African Airways from Johannesburg to Cape Town, Cape Town back to Johannesburg. So it's just a round trip there uh, once you get to South Africa. Also, once you're in the U.S., uh, if, I just need to know what airport you're in. That way, I can see if I can work the numbers. If we can get it to work in the budget, then we can just accommodate you for a connection flight which is more than likely, uh, but um, but for the most part, base of everything is covered from well, from Atlanta. But like all trips I've done, I'd make sure that everyone fly, traveling with us get connection flights in the budget of it unless they're coming from somewhere international like Hawaii or Alaska. That's when the difference um, doesn't work out. But uh, nevertheless, um, that is the uh, price of the South Africa portion and um, optional Zambia, Botswana, Botswana, and Zimbabwe from November 29th to December 4th, $1,100. And that also covers a round trip from Johannesburg to Livingstone, Zambia, and back to Johannesburg, where the flight will leave and head back to Atlanta. And so it could be you can get do both of them, or you can just do South Africa. And you know, based on who, based on the individual, you just have to let me know once you communicate with me. So I'll just have it you know, separated on the sheet. Uh, both tours include uh, transportation and tours throughout South Africa, transportation and tours throughout Zambia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe, daily exercise and meditation session, um, which was something that uh, we always encourage whenever I travel, you know, for those who are just up for it in the morning. Uh, daily continental breakfast, lunch, and gourmet dinner. So all three meals are provided three- and four-star hotel accommodation, double occupancy, business and investment, or just any kind of networking that we may put together just to educate and share with our group who's interested in this other you know, other ventures in South Africa. So just always looking to put that in anywhere we travel just as a way just to document and share information as far as you know, investments and business in the relative country. Uh, entrance and access to all sites and activities uh, certified English-speaking tour guides, and we have uh, what's not included is a $50 group tip, and then if we go somewhere and there's a camera camcorder fee, that's something that the individual with a camera or camcorder would have to pay. Uh, we never really know which sites that are traveled around the world that, or in Africa that may require that. But beyond this uh, tour package price, only thing that's not included really is the uh, $50 group tips. And we just collect that once we in the country or at the airport when we just meet up and things like that. 
All right, so for uh, South Africa, the breakdown of it is uh, when Johannesburg part uh, is three days. So what we, what we have uh, listed is uh, Leslie Cultural Village based of Cradle of Humankind, Mandela House in Orlando West, South Soweto, and it's a national mu monument, Hector Peterson Memorial and Museum, the Apartheid Museum, which is an architectural interesting and packed with thoughtful, often brutal reminders of South Africa history. The old fort at Constitu Constitution Hill and lodging at Protea Hotel Johannesburg. So that's a nice overview of the two days that will actually go out while we're in South Africa. Uh, Cape Town, um, three days. Um, District 6 Museum and learn about the apartheid history township tour including Langa and Kalayetu. Um, ferry to UNESCO listed uh, Robin Island for a tour of former uh, prisons for political um, prisoners. Uh, this is where Nelson Mandela spent 18 of his 27 years in prison. Panoramic sight over the city from the top of Table Mountain. Cape Town, Malay quarters and learn about neighborhood fascinating history. Castle of Good Hope and Minerton Lighthouse. Uh, Cape Town Diamond Works and see South Africa Julia's finest and lodging at Patio, uh, Cape Town. There's also a beautiful uh, waterfront, um, just great for social nightlife. So it's um, not high end, deep into culture like a Ghana tour, but uh, it's um, South Africa is always just a nice feel of Africa, especially if you've been to other parts of Africa. All right, and one of, one of those pictures uh, is just me throwing up a fist uh, right in a colorful artwork right above the Johannesburg part of the overview. Right, and once uh, we're out of Cape Town, uh, we'll fly back to Johannesburg, and those who are going back to the U.S. go to the U.S., and those who are coming with us to uh, so-called Victoria Falls will fly directly to Zambia, and we'll literally be close to the falls. So while we're there, it's for four days, but the breakdown is the one day we'll be in Botswana doing a river and land safari, and another day we'll be across Zimbabwe doing mm -hmm. learn about cultural history and, and certain documentation of Zimbabwe history. So that is you know so that is you're set in the middle of four countries. So we're walking across uh, two different countries. Um, the one visa covered all. Uh, so when you get when you fly into Zambia and we get the Zambia visa, you're looking at about fifty sixty dollars at the airport. And then that visa is good for one trip over to Botswana, one trip over to Zimbabwe, uh, which is perfect for our itinerary. Right. Right. So we're going to, so most say Oyatunya, or the smoke that thunders, a.k.a. Victoria Falls and Victoria Bridge in Zambia. In modern terms, Victoria Falls is known as the greatest curtain of fallen water in the world. Uh, shop it at Maramba Market. Uh, which is the biggest market in Livingstone, Zambia. Kazungula border cross over to Botswana. So we're going to use the speedboat to cross over from Zambia over to Botswana. So we will talk about many safety situations. Uh, for those who are traveling with us, to make sure everybody has vests on and people hold on tight and everything is, is in nice order. All right. So cross over uh, Zambezi River from Zambia to Botswana for boat crews and Chobe River and a 4x4 four four game drive to Chobe National Park. So when we do the land safari, you're in a secure vehicle and you know, talk about things like that and you know, people just doing all the safety things and just following the guides at these different parks and sites who have all the experience and making sure we're safe and we're good to go. Uh, tour of Victoria Falls town in Zimbabwe and learn about the roots and culture of the people. So the neighboring town the Zimbabwe city is called Victoria Falls. So this uh, Blania Blue Eye White Devil um, and her and our explorer at this literally named the entire region of themselves from Livingstone, the, the the explorer and all these other people. So you know, it'd be interested to, to learn about those history and everything. But um, unfortunately, some of these are just the, the terminology that we have available uh, named after these people. Uh, but uh, Victoria Falls, the original name is Mosea Oyatunya, or the smoke that thunders. So that's what the local people call it. But it's you know very fascinating and interesting uh, part of Africa, and, and we're here about we've been hearing about 
Zambia and the political news and the Chinese takeover and, and many things like that, which I don't know much about. Yeah. But uh, this is a nice, fun filled experience on just a wonderful uh, 11 day uh, in the southern part of Africa. So, this is uh, something that I uh, was working on since last, um, you know, last um, December, and I thought it was a great time to just introduce back South Africa and connect back with my business partners and folks I know in South Africa and let them know that uh, we're coming in and just you know, want to get a nice feel. So family, once you look at the overview and everything, the next thing you can look at is the full itinerary, which is give you full data day schedule, and you can look at also the visa and other information. So that is a nice introduction of South Africa. Let me go back to the main South Africa menu. And general terms, I'll um, tell you about uh, deposit, uh, payment options, and the relative payment options also on the main menu. We click on it, give you a list of payment options, but everyone who have their email address, I've sent you those things via email also. But naturally, everything is there on the uh, website. And I'm going to go to the uh, Ghana departure and reminder list. But the uh, next file I was going to put on South Africa is a modified version. Of the list I'm going to go to for South Africa once I, you know, once we get a little more into certain things in South Africa. So more than likely, next time we do another conference call, I'll have a uh, relative list up. And this is a preparation and reminder list of just a summary of what we would talk about over a period of conference calls and go through and all the necessary need to know. And this you know, it's also mainly just for like a final check off. That way almost nothing is forgotten. Yeah. So family, what I'm going to do is click on uh, Ghana tour November 2018. And also for, for those of us that traveled into Ghana with us, um, this list was sent to you via email. And before I continue with this, uh, I'm going to open up questions to, to see if anyone has any questions uh, about South Africa or if um, I need to share some more details. So family, star six to uh, unmute yourself. And also family, this is a question pertaining to what we just talked about South Africa for November 2019. Uh, somebody asked me if I was going to share the screen. No share screen in tonight, uh, but we definitely want people to know that uh, you can just view the conference call online. Uh, sharing screen would be nice, but most of what we have is just want everyone to follow directions on the website. So if you, so right now we're at the South Africa uh, tour link, and since we have any questions, I'm going to move to Ghana, November. 2018 tour link. Good morning. Uh, go ahead. Uh, who am I speaking with? Uh, this is Sean. Hi, right, greetings for Sean. Uh, where are you calling from? Uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, greetings, brother. Good, good talking with you again, and uh, thank you for your, your message and interest in the uh, Let me know what uh, question you have. Yeah, my interest is in the South Africa tour. Only question I had, could you Repeat what you said, something about the passport. You said it was no passport needed for South Africa? Yes, exa exactly. Um, let me just flip back on uh, the South Africa link. I, on our website for the, for the tour information, uh, what I have is uh, it says South Africa visa clarification. And the visa clarification, uh, clarification information I have, it's basically saying that um, we don't need a visa for South Africa. And the last time I went to South Africa, the same situation, and um, other people have went. You don't need a, a visa. And but when we do Zambia, uh, Botswana, and Zimbabwe, we need a visa, which is one visa, which we'll literally get on arrival once we enter the country. We get it um, while we're processing through, and that visa will, will give us our entry, uh, one entry into Botswana, one into Zimbabwe. And this, it's naturally the uh, Zambia uh, visa. Okay. And um, let me just read a quick line for you also, just for the record, uh, share with a few other people. U.S. citizen, U.S. US uh, passport holders visiting the Republic of South Africa for 90 days or less for tourism, business purpose, do not need visa or slash business purpose. So that's the main thing it's saying to it, and then it goes into a few other things. But well, all of us that are traveling with us are usually just going to the country for less than 90 days. So once that was clarified, 
that's um that's that sounds some good information. So that's you know so that's perfect, man. That's one that's visa. Um, uh, Sean, uh, uh, last year I went to Ghana, Togo, and Benin in November. Do you know what we had to do? We had to get all kind of visa, one for Ghana, one for Togo, one for uh, uh, for Benin. And it was like a nightmare. And uh, I was happy that everything worked out. But that's a struggle you have to deal with. Um, even though I know it's rougher on the other side and people are trying to line up and get American visa. But uh, uh, absolutely, man. I appreciate your question, man. And I got you on an email list, so I definitely keep you posted as be- begin to build a, a stronger energy for this uh, South Africa journey. Thank you. All right, perfect. Uh, all right, anyone else have any questions uh, for our journey uh, to uh, South Africa, November 2019, with optional uh, hey, one, one more question. Uh, go ahead. Uh, do we have enough people to go to South Africa? Is it a lot of interest in going to South Africa? Oh, absolutely. So uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Right now, uh, it's 10 people confirmed. Um, including uh, myself and uh, a small core of people, and which is uh, right enough. And right now I'm just working on this, coming back from uh, Ghana and just collecting uh, the deposit as we just open things up for collecting deposit and then start working on locking down our reservation for our Delta, like South Africa uh, flight arrangements, which is uh, very complex. So, but, uh, yeah, we definitely uh, have a group ready to go, and that's my new... Uh, you know, venture as far as this other tours outside of Ghana and then the other one that I'm working on is uh, Kenya and Tanzania. Uh, unfortunately, the Ethiopia journey, I, I had, there's more people interested in going to uh, Tanzania and I just realized it's just best to do those other two countries. So as of, you know, for now, those are what I'm going to be going with and you know, the Ghana energy is growing, growing very strong. Right. Oh, this is can you hear me, Bamani? Uh, sure, if you can just uh, let me know your name and where you're calling from and your question. Uh, this is Doris in Austin, Texas. I'm, I'm, going, I'm interested in going to the South Africa trip, so I just wanted to respond to the guy who wanted to know if it was enough. <laughs> I'm planning on going. Uh, absolutely. You're one of many more of to, to join. And I so look forward to meeting you, Doris. Yes, same, the same here. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, you can always share the information with uh, both of you and other people with your friends and family and have them check it out. It's right there on the website, nice and clean and clear. And if they're interested, they can just get a good start and just, um, you know, pace themselves. And yes. Absolutely. So the more the merit, but uh, the group size that we're anticipating as far as this estimate of everything is 20 to 30 of us on a nice uh, small bus or a nice small coach bus. Good morning. Uh, this is Carl J. Hughes from Washington, D.C. Um, I am also interested in the South Africa trip. Uh, absolutely, definitely. You know, we just want to make sure that you get to Ghana and, and, and uh, survive the journey of a lifetime and make sure and then uh, <laughs> get you to South Africa. Uh, you know, absolutely. You definitely All right. Know. Definitely welcome to join us in all our wonderful ventures. Getting you ready for that uh, wonderful journey with us there for November, which is unbelievable. Three months ago, it was early June, like June 5th, getting ready to leave from Ghana, just freshly put this information out for this tour. And right now we are 40 strong, and this is a wonderful thing. Got Maybe still have room for a few more people um, as we can max out. 43 to 45 the most. Anyone who still feels that they can make this journey, uh, it's 30 days out. It takes uh, 7 to 10 days to get the visa. So hopefully anyone who have not gotten their Ghana visa are looking at the details. And if you don't or can't find a Ghana visa email with the attachments and all that fine details, and you want to use that versus the information on the website, just send me an email and I'll send it to you ASAP. And so we just want to make sure everybody always have everything clear with every paperwork, visa or anything, because there's no refund on not being able to get your passport or uh, visa. So we'd rather for you to make sure that those things are clear up front, that way we can salvage your money and it doesn't get lost, because two months before we leave, everything has to be paid off. 
that way we can uh, you know, focus and finalize on everything. So any visa questions or any visa dilemma can always just send me an email, communicate with me. Uh, the, the main thing about the visas is that this, you have to follow everything to the full detail and put your uh, return envelope in the package. That way it can be sent back to you, your passport, uh, with your visa stamp inside. All right, so um, uh, this is generally sharing that. So family, let me move on to uh, Ghana tour November 2018. And the main purpose of um, this link I'm going to send is a modify list of the departure reminder list for the journey November 2018. So once you get to the website and you scroll down to the very bottom, it's the last list. Now this list is a combination of a few different things like the Ghana like the Ghana preparation and the Ghana culture list. All right, and this is just the same exact information for those of us uh, traveling in May. The only difference is we're just using you know, these uh, November uh, dates since it's uh, right, right close by. All of the Ghana tour November 2018 documentation can be found on our website link or from the main menu of our website. This includes tour overview, full itinerary, general terms, visa process, language translation and tree, what to pack, cultural need to know, health information, departure and reminder list, etc. And they'll just have the link right there. Once you click on it, it'll just load and list all 10 articles. Number two, uh, gratuities. Prior to departure, Africa for Africans will collect tips for hospitality services that will be provided in Ghana. This amount is based on the numbers of confirmed tour participants. This will serve as a separate charge for the tour and will be collected on the departure date up on arrival at Atlanta or Amsterdam Airport. Total per person is $50. This will allow us to expedite service. You can give additional tips to anyone who gives you great services or whoever you choose. The $50 represents basic tips for all after Ghana staff, including drivers, guides at all sites, hotel staff, and entertainment at One Africa Resort. All other services that may be provided on this tour are tip to choose base. So that does cover all of the tip and sites and places like that and just get that out of the way. Number three, when you visit, do not come with a romanticized notion about Ghana slash Africa or you will be disappointed and unnecessarily frustrated. Come with open eyes and an open mind knowing that Ghana is a developing nation there is much to do, and we can be a positive, contributory part of it. Keep in mind that Ghana slash Africa is not America or Europe, nor do we want it to be. We are Mother Africa children returning home, and we want to be a part of Mother Africa growth and development. Four, Delta Airlines e-ticket to log and go to delta.com, then click on My Trips, then enter your name and confirmation number to access your flight info. Uh, change seats, add special services, add frequent flyer number, email address, emergency contacts, and more. Print ticket and put uh, with uh, your passport. If you have any issues with accessing your ticket or see incorrect details or on your flight itinerary or have any questions in general, please just contact us as soon as possible. Right? Uh, note this access to your ticket is only available 45 days before the flight departure and the date uh, when tickets are paid in full. Uh, or So when we do tickets, um, usually we have a one month to two months to close out on balance and everything. So I try to do it closer to 45 to 60 days uh, to close out our final balance. And before that, uh, information is sent for everyone to log on. So we log on to your flight to make sure that your name looks good, your, your personal information, all those things are, are put in the system. And then we just close out, and then you get a final uh, ticket receipt saying the ticket is paid for. Um, and so everyone who's traveling with me uh, have their tickets and everything, so those things are finalized. Uh, some people, once you log into KLM or Air France, which I prefer you to log into Air France because KLM website has been going one week it works, one week it doesn't work for us to log in. But um, it's their aircraft, and they have a, a rule where they sell priority seating. So for the most part, all of us that are flying on a Delta jet or on 
on flight reservations, you know, because you know, dealing with code share, Air France, KLM, Delta Airlines, they split a certain portion of you know, the aircraft set up. So some bookings naturally comes to the Delta system, so it makes us to where we can go and add seats on, on you know, KLM or Air France. Uh, and then some people booking, it doesn't allow you to do that based on when flights are booked and what seats are available, if more were available in the Air France or KLM system. So it's a complex matter of craziness, but um, if you see that you have to pay for seating, the best thing I recommend is either you pay for the seating, for the party seating, or wait when you get to the counter and you'll be assigned a seat directly. Uh, other than that, it's normal. But I uh, definitely recommend everyone to check in 24 hours before their flight, um, you know, within the 24 hours, and make sure everything looks good. And if anything is strange, so, you know, you can call me. But naturally if, naturally, if you have any issues with your flights from here on, you can always call uh, Delta Airlines Direct, and they, they can work it out uh, for you. But um, you know, up until you know, to, to literally before I start on the Make My Move, you can call me. But beyond that, when I'm on a flight and I'm moving around and I may not be able to answer your call, you just, I'll just, the best thing to do is just speak to Delta agent. Every, all the tickets, we spent a whole month clearing them, make sure everything is good. So literally if there's any mistake or anything strange or somewhere, so you can literally just reach out to me. Now. Other than that, we're all good on tickets. So that's all what number four is saying. It gives you access to your ticket 45 days before we leave. And literally at least before a week before we leave, we want to make sure that no one has any kind of ticket issue or, or any kind of anything that may not be clear. All right, so... Um, uh, moving forward, uh, five, uh, make sure you secure your personal documents, including passport, tickets, etc. Just recommend you scan or make a copy of these documents, um, save or leave with a family or email them to yourself. This general uh, recommendation, nothing that you have to do. Uh, six, uh, please verify all travel documents and have them secure for your travel date. Yeah, so the same thing, uh, once you have your information, just make sure everything is secure and that way we don't have people leaving the valuable documents behind, and all these things are things that you know, have happened in the past. So, you know, we just literally have to just make sure everything is in writing and clear. Because uh, once you wake up late or you miss your flight, the best thing I can recommend is to send me an email, um, send me a WhatsApp message, on, like on the WhatsApp group that we created, so we can know, you know, that, um, you know, where you are, and you just get our flight booked to Delta Airlines, tell them the, your best scenario, whatever the situation may be. And you know, hopefully they don't charge you too much, or if, hopefully they don't charge at all. And then we'll send our driver from the hotel to just meet with you, and then we just get you on a tour with us. And yeah, so anything that comes up, anything like that, we just I'm just available here for you know full communication seven days a week. All right, um, number seven, recommend arrive at the airport two to three hours to give yourself enough time to check in, go through security, and get on the flight. And some airports um, it not, might not be hectic, like Atlanta Airport at the domestic and international side, uh, especially on busy holidays. Uh, but this is just ma definitely mainly for those hotel, uh, airports um, that uh, can justify that. But in general, just uh, pace yourself as best as you can. Uh, number eight, check bags. Two check bags, each with a 50-pound li limit per bag is uh, included in your reservations. Make sure your bags are secure with a lock and a name tag. Verify all labeling of bags direct to ACC. So basically, once you get to the counter and they, you, get a, you get a baggage receipt and you also get a, you know, the ribbon put on your bags, just make sure it's the ACC for Accra, Ghana. So no matter where in the Delta system, KLM, Air France, whatever, wherever into that bag, you know, it's instructed automatically to go to Accra. So any misconfusion or craziness happened in the airport system, the bag ends up still going to Accra. So you just want to make sure that uh, that's on, and then you have a bag of, baggage receipt. None of us should worry about uh, checking or looking for our bags anywhere in any of the, the connection parts of the world. The bag is going straight through. So once you check it at that first airport, um, you're good all the way through. Some of us have you know, double connection, so if, and then most of us just in general just have single connection. But um, it's all work the same. And then the other thing is um, Delta charge $100 for overweight bags. So if your bags are 51 to 70 pounds, that's the cost of it. 
Uh, if you need an extra bag, it's $200 for, the, for an additional bag. And no bags are allowed over 70 pounds. Uh, put all liquids over three ounces in your bag. Now, if you're looking to you know, carry certain things, just be mindful of that when you're packing. Uh, nine, carry on bags. You may carry one, uh, one bag and one personal item of no charge. Please note that the item must easily fit in the overhead bin or under the seat in front of you. Uh, Ten, when packing luggage, remember that less is better. You will want to purchase clothing and artifacts and bring them back. So that is this, uh, the first 10 uh, parts of um, this uh, preparation departure list as we talk about packing and a few uh, basic things. But I want to open up for questions, see if anyone have any questions in reference to either tours uh, going to Ghana or South Africa about uh, these kind of preparations. The world seems to be quiet tonight. It's so quiet. I can't even hear anything at all, anything outside. All right, so family just went through the first 10 parts of the departure reminder list, and we are open for questions. But Mani, can you hear me? All right, perfect. Uh, 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 go ahead, uh, Kalade. Okay, I just wanted to ask a question. I know you sent out something, and I can't find it on what, on, on Wi-Fi when we get there. What is the... Uh, either give me, could you either give me the reference of where I find that, or either share it widely right now? Uh, yes. Uh, what I have is the preparation and departure list. Those are all of the things that I would talk about. Um, I just haven't. Um, it, it's, it's on there. I just haven't gotten to the part where it talks about electronics. We we'll left off at ten, but what I want to just go to fifteen real quick, uh, since we have a question on fifteen. Uh, everyone had a question about electronics. Let me just go to electronics uh, real quick. Uh, it's on the 15 on this uh, preparation departure list. Camera slash camcorder. Bring extra film and memory card and rechargeable batteries. If you have electronics, bring a converter, foreign adapters, and an extension cord. All right, now this is the part that where Kaladi had a question. It's supposed to say, um, bring an unlocked iPhone or Samsung Galaxy so we can set a mobile SIM card and assist you with your own network to give you a wireless access during an entire tour. So example, um, some of us have phones that are, maybe, maybe, maybe it's a locked phone. So if you take it to Ghana, it won't work. Um, and then some of us have unlocked phones. The only way you can really know if you're not clear is to call customer service of your carrier and confirm that. But what I'm recommending in general, um, in, this, in my situation, this is what I use. I just get an unlock, um, maybe an AT&T unlock um, Samsung Galaxy phone. And then when I bring it to Ghana, I get a SIM card. And the SIM card is, is like equivalent to one or two U.S. dollars. And then maybe add about the equivalent to 10 U.S. dollars of minutes or maybe more. Uh, and then purchase separate data minutes to where once you, you, you set up your own wireless network on the phone, then you can generate your own mobile in, internet based on the data you add to your, you know, you add to your phone system SIM card. Uh, so the SIM card is just that it's a chip where all of your data and everything is programmed into, um, and it just reaches to the phone. So not to get all technical or anything, it's one way you can have a, your own independent network. And say if we're on a bus and we're moving around, and we have, there's a decent signal from that carrier, which is our MTN, you know, you'll be able to do that, and that's what I've been doing over the last uh, few years. All right, so that is 15. Let me uh, unmute your Kalade. Let me know if that uh, answers your question on 15. That does your question, yes. Thank you. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Excellent. Does it have to be a Samsung? Can it be like a BlackBerry or an LG? Um, not necessarily saying it can't be one of those, because when you get to Ghana, you'll find other phones that work like that. But as far as like having like a unique mobile network, those are the two phones that I know that you can literally create your own personal mobile network off the, you know, the resources of your SIM card that you, you know, that you, you set up. So other phones may be able to do that, but those I know for sure because I've used those and we help people all the time. But that's the, those are the popular phones that most people, you know, most people travel with. Uh, continue, um, Kalade. Okay, I know from my traveling in Africa in the past. 
that, okay, say I don't have a Samsung or an iPhone. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, I've been able to buy a local phone. Would that do the same thing um, in terms of having an independent network? Because um, it's the same, M what is it, MTM? Yeah, uh, yes, MTM. Yeah, it may be the phone, same phone service, but the main thing is some of these phones I mentioned, like Samsung Galaxy and iPhones, they have they have this they have unique software to create these mobile networks. Some of the the basic phones may not have that. So what we do is when we go to the market, we confirm that the phone can create that network and you can purchase it. But in general, you're looking at anywhere from probably about seventy five dollars to anywhere to one hundred fifty dollars for a phone that has that kind of feature. And it's it's just like equivalent to the same price you find one of those phones. Therefore, it depends on how used or new it is, on, on especially on the older versions. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. All right, uh, Edna, let me... Hi, can you hear me, Bobani? Yes, our greetings, uh, Edna. Um, how are you? Greetings. I'm from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, to uh, the other members. Um, my question is, uh, I heard you were talking about um, how many ounces. Now, you didn't say anything about our check bags. How many ounces are we allowed to put in our check bag of liquid or whatever? I put liquor bottles in there and all kind of stuff. <laughs> okay. And I put bags with just like like full bag, big thing of hand sanitizer or I'm trying to think of other things liquid. Maybe even put a big bottle, of, a small bottle of water or something in there. But there's no restrictions on that, um, as I can remember looking through the details. Only restriction on, restriction is on check bags. On excuse me, is on carry on bags. Okay, and that's up to what you said, three ounces, not over, or up to. Um, no more than three ounces. But you know, the most I think I've got away from 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 going through security was maybe four or five ounces. But anything other than that, they've got me on. <laughs> okay. 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 That's all I need you to know right now. All right, uh, Bomani. Courtney, uh, I have a question. Good greetings. I have a question about the mobile network. Sure, so man. my my carrier will allow me to have uh, mobile coverage in Ghana. I'm just curious if you know the mobile network that you're talking about. Do you know anything about the speed of the data or anything like that? Just so I can compare it with what my carrier says it will provide. I uh, know, but I can definitely uh, get that to you in an email or something, especially once I go to Ghana and try to find those specific. But the name of the company is called MTN, and it's um, one of the more popular networks there in Ghana. And um, okay, if you try, if you can find some specifics, I'll definitely once I get to the country, I'll get some specifics from the cards when you get the, uh, the actual SIM cards. It should have all the, the, the those kind of just, um technical specs on there. So you're saying I ought to be able to just browse online and figure out what the speed will be to the MTN network? Yes, absolutely. You should be able to find it online. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'd appreciate that, and I'll look myself as well. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, the line is open. Uh, anybody else have any questions? All right, uh, so everybody is mute. So we last we left off at 10. Eleven, bring a set of white slash red, black, green, and gold, including the pay homage to our ancestors. Now, the red, black, green, and gold combination for ancestor day one, that is for a visit to a tin man. So uh, every time we have what we have on a tenor, once we leave uh, Kumasi, we head straight to a tin man, so which is in the central region. It's a four-hour drive from, uh, from Kumasi. And it's about almost one hour away from the coast. Um, in the city of Cape Coast and Sash Elmina, which is close by. And we go to a location called Sin Man, so and this is where our ancestors took their last bath before they were auctioned off to the, the dungeon. So it's a um, place of memorial where it's kind of an old slave market. So we take, you know, we do a, a full presentation of it. And so that's uh, the red, black, green, and gold combination. Now, when we go to the actual Holocaust dungeons, more than likely Cape Coast, that's Ancestor Day 2, and we'll wear all white. And just as white as 
you can and if you just don't want to wear white or you can't find something white it's all good it's nothing personal we don't look at it as that we just try to just you know it's uh it's just colors of harmony of what we are connecting to you know as a people so that's what those um different days are for and when we actually get to the country in november um the monday the monday actual portion of the tour when we first get in november 19th i'll have the uh the new uh, tour T-shirts, which I'm still finalizing on the color to order them uh, sometime this week, and we can all wear that together. Um, and that's just that that day when we actually go to um, you know, go to the Ghana City Tour, uh, Accra City Tour. That's the Pan African Day. We usually go to all of the Pan African sites, so we just usually connect with another set of Pan African colors, which is what well, I'm modifying all of the T-shirts with as I produce new T-shirts. So, you know, it's some significant time and energy during Ghana to reconnect to the greatness of our ancestors and how this energy of repatriation began and how, you know, so you, you'll see Kwame Nkrumah pictures and things on a lot of the tour books and things that we have, but it's just, you know, studying you know, Kwame Nkrumah, learning about uh, his legacy and really just brought me to where I just feel like Ghana is an ideal country for us to connect with and build it because the energy of the foundation was already laid in the country for repatriation and nation building. And so that's the wonderful uh, set of colors. Now we move into 12. Uh, bring any school supplies you can to donate to the children in Ghana. So what we have set up is for us bring any basic things, uh, financial donation, books, uh, uh, bags, paper, pencils, calculator, basic clothing, and we're also collecting uh, mainly the black doll babies for the young children at the, at the orphanage and there at One Africa. Yeah, so it's just up to the individual, and you can just use that to pack a full pack, you know, put all of those wonderful things in one part of your bag or one bag, and then have the rest of your bag open up for you to buy a lot of wonderful things. All right, uh, so we're going to 13. Uh, 13, I have uh, this set up for this meet and greet time. So Ghana tour November 16, Group 6 TM meetup at the Atlanta airport. Now this 6 o'clock is inside of the airport. Uh, for those of us that outside of the Atlanta airport, we'll meet much earlier. It's only a few of us, so I'll just have a personal conversation if we need help with certain bags. But uh, for everybody that's meeting up inside, um, we just meet up at the departure gate, and I just want to meet up with everybody as quick as possible so we can just connect and take a few group photos and just get ourselves organized. And this is going to be in the Delta International uh, Terminal uh, at the Amsterdam departure gate. So I don't know the gates or anything, so everybody just have to follow their you know, their flight booking schedule. Uh, all your flight was to take you directly to a connection that would take you to Amsterdam or directly to Amsterdam. So a flight literally departs at 8.13 p.m. and arrives the next day at 10.45. Now, some of us that are leaving from Atlanta have a different flight schedule. I have three different flight schedules leaving from Atlanta. I did the best I could do to book as much ticket as possible um, to lock in Atlanta, but after a while, the things will start changing. It's a busy holiday. But nevertheless, um, a few people are leaving out before us, and then a few people are leaving out after us. But this is the direct main group of flight segments are set up. That way, other people that are coming from anywhere from you know, from Dallas, uh, Houston, are uh, coming from um, Washington, D.C., just anywhere in general, uh, they will connect with us, or they will connect in Detroit or JFK Airport, and then we just literally all meet up there in uh, Amsterdam. So it's set for a group meetup again on November 17th at 12.30 uh, for group departure at 2.25. So I usually set a group meetup time for about two hours because one hour before an international departure, that's when um, the flight attendants are boarding the flights. That one hour gives us a good time to just really connect for you know, maybe the 30 minutes or so and you know, get ourselves organized in the line and just get boarded. So unfortunately, we do have some people that have ridiculously long layovers, and it was just inevitable, and there's nothing we can really do about it based on the city that you're from. So some of us do get there early in the morning. If you do decide to go out and enjoy Amsterdam, enjoy yourself, and we just catch you back at a meetup time, 
um, we won't have enough time to go out and you know we're just trying to focus on getting to our Ghana flight but I do understand that some people may want to go out just make sure that you put your secure things in a secure locker or somewhere secure and then go out and come back make sure you keep all your personals with you passport documentation all those things and just you know, be safe out there if you decide to go to Amsterdam. It's not something that uh, we have any control or anything over. Uh, number 14, uh, bring any necessary med medicine that you might need. So that goes into this a long list of things. Uh, so it's, what we always recommend is that you talk to the person that uh, is a natural health practitioner or your doctor in general or make a doctor visit and then you just have that conversation. Well, nevertheless, I do have a link on the website where to talk about building your immune system as a certain recommendation. And now uh, we talked about 15, uh, all electronics. Uh, 16, um, bring travel, travel iron, alarm clock, plastic bags, compact, compact umbrella, waterproof poncho, and other convenient accessories. The reason why um, I say all these things is this a list of preparation thing, so it's up to the individual. I'm not saying everyone to bring all the things that I'm going through. 17. Mosquito spray or repellent or essential oil, which is an excellent insect repellent. Avoid wearing scented lotions or oil. Mosquitoes like sweet scent. No, most of these sprays have dangerous chemicals, so do your research and you know, work on getting whatever is the safest to use. 18. Calculator for basic things like currency exchange. Gonna see the exchange rate is for one US dollar is equal to 4.5 Ghana CDs. Now, it fluctuates a little bit, so maybe a little bit more today or tomorrow, but that's the medium range it's been. Uh, now bring big bills, 50s and $100, because you get a better exchange rate. Uh, if you bring anything like a 20 and a 10, you'll get maybe a denomination of 4.2, or some people try to give you a 4.0. So that's the difference. You end up losing a lot of money. Bring as much... Um, Cash as you think you need. Recommend four to eight hundred dollars. Bring a Visa card uh, to access the ATMs. Mastercards, not so much recommend, but you can still bring them. Uh, you still have um, machines that will take them in both uh, the Accra Mall and the Kumasi Mall, and out there in the city of Cape Coast. Um, mm -hmm. But Visa is what uh, works uh, most efficient because uh, everywhere it takes them. And also, a recommendation is just make sure that uh, you call your bank and let them know that you're traveling international in the country and the dates and everything. That way you won't have any issues with your, you know, your bank card when you do decide to use it. Um, yeah, so this, this is definitely prevented from being locked. And if it does get locked, you just call eight hundred number, put, it on your, you know, put some minutes in your Ghana phone and call and you know, just get it resolved. Take probably about five minutes. All right, and in some cases, it will let you get money out and do those things one or two times and maybe the second or third time it just locks your card. So just a nice little precaution. And all right, um, the weather is going to be not so much below 70s, but in your 70s uh, up to mid 80s, kind of like a tropical country like uh, Aruba, Jamaica, the Bahamas. Uh, bring light clothing, sandals, shorts, walking shoes, sundress, tank tops, swimwear, casual slash African clothing for certain nightlife and evening events like business and network conference and welcome and farewell dinner. You know, so like when we go to the, the Jamrock uh, restaurant, we're going to just all dress up, you know, dress up as, and dress up as you want to dress up based on your comfort in general. You know, so we're just sharing attires, you know, of this uh, socializing. The Micklin and Kumasi in Accra definitely talk to management to make sure that the, the pool ready for any social pool party or any morning exercise that we're going to be doing by the pool and for, for the children to enjoy their swimming. All right, 21, uh, no photo taken allowed at airport, state office building, other government facilities. Your film will be confiscated and you could be arrested. Uh, so let's avoid, um, especially when you get to the American Embassy, they have these big photos, places that say no photographer, no photography and things like that. So they include mean, they include videos and all those things. And uh, they, you know, they will stop our bus and uh, whatever they think, do it, they will pull you off the bus and interrogate you. Some of them may be 
you know, maybe Ghanaian soldiers or maybe U.S. military soldiers, but they have, but the American embassy is very armed and they take that serious. So this, we, we're past it on our way into the city when we just stop by and explain in that part of, you know, what the tour guide is going to talk about. So it's definitely a sight to be seen. It's like one of the biggest embassies I've ever seen. It's like a fortress. You know? And who knows what they have in there. Lots of top secret, but that's part of um, the African Command in West Africa. The other one I've seen is in Benin. Military secured by all of their oppressors and colonizers. It's unfortunate. I guess we can always talk about that in a later time, uh, but it is safe to go there in Ghana and don't want to get anybody alarmed. So always just say one know that these things are normal. Ever since I've been traveling Africa for the last 14 years, I've always seen military bases and military soldiers in different countries. 22, uh, after tour does not offer travel insurance, but it can be purchased from an independent insurer. Passport Health is one of the companies that have locations in different parts of the United States that offer travel and health service. Uh, so you can use, click on Passport link, um, you can reach out to that company, put your zip code in and find out that they're offering yellow fever. If you decide to take yellow fever, it's not, that's fine. It's, um, it's really not something that everyone can find, so there's nothing that um, the country of Ghana can hold to our, hold against us. So anyone want to have a personal conversation about that, I'll do my best to talk with them and share. Um, especially if the yellow fever is ridiculous or if you can't you know, get access to it, which has been the, you know, more and more cases as the years have gone by. All right, uh, 23, uh, toiletries including tissue, soap, feminine napkins, wet wire, facial tissues, washcloth, beach towel, and laundry soap. Just give a list of convenient items that you may want to pack uh, so you can have your own things. Uh, there's a mall in both Accra and Kumasi which you can easily access a few minutes. Uh, the taxi will take you there and back. Uh, they have all those things in the store also, so if you want to take time with your tour to look for those things, that's absolutely fine. Um, you can go before or after the tour, or you can, yeah, whatever your sequence you want to be, but you have access to all those things in case you may have you know, forgot something or don't want to bring certain things. 24, Ghanaians are very friendly. However, be wary of people who just want to make quick money from you or make promises they cannot keep. Uh, you should know as much as possible about people you're planning to do business with. So I just want to share something, and it's honestly, family, it's no disrespect to anybody, anybody from where I'm from, Jamaica, or anybody from Ghana, or just any black person in general. But wherever you go in the world, and we're labeled as tourists or whatever, it's game on, and it's what it is. You know, people there see things different from you, see things. You're there having a good time and enjoying the country. And some people may be scheming on you. Some people may be trying to win your heart to marry you and tell you that they love you a long time and they want to be with you forever and tell you that they're a prince and they want you to be their princess. I mean, it will be unbelievable the amount of things I can see and just tell you that I've seen this being a world explorer. And it's, it's, it's fun and I laugh about it sometimes and mess with people. But, you know, for, you know, but when the people know that you're going to meet people that's going to say love you and be with you and tell you all kind of ridiculous things. And some people may believe and some people may not. Not saying that they're bad people. Uh, some people have their own ulterior motives and gimmicks that you know, they see. People have seen me come to the country the last 12 years with big tour bus and things like that. And, you know, things have gone on. But just be careful of who you connect with and be careful of women, ladies, any guys that you connect with and vice versa. You know, Ghana represents a beautiful culture, a beautiful country with a lot of beautiful people. Well, my definitely favorite country is because of one thing. It has incredible family values you know, and things like that. So that's what... With someone like myself would be very, very much attracted to people in that country, you know. So I've got good friends and good family there, and it's just not but love. But you know, nevertheless, just like anywhere else, um, you know, just like if you have a house there, you know, I'm I, I'm serious about security in America because I believe there's a bunch of lunatics walking around the streets in general all over the country, and you just have to protect yourself and be safe and secure, just like in Ghana. Be careful leaving windows open and things open so people don't jump in and, and take your stuff and do all kinds of things. So always make sure that you're safe and secure. But nevertheless, uh, beyond that, uh, as you know, a survivor of world explore, exploration and traveling, just want to share that with you because I've seen all kinds of things go chaotic and things just go wrong. 
And you know, the good thing about it, you know, you're rolling with professionals, then my crew that I'm training, and you know, so we got your back, and all the people that I have there in Ghana that are just experts, and I'll be around you for the duration. Some may be in Accra, some may be in Kumasi, some may be in Cape Coast, Almina, but that's what we have set up on this journey. All right, um, as we close out on this games, uh, leisure time, um, social gathering, uh, deck of cards, dominoes, chess, uh, board games and everything, just like for us to break those things out. And for those who have the digital laptops who want to play chess and those things, all fun and everything, as long as we just, you know, just enjoy ourselves and everything. And I always tell people that, you know, I mean, it's fun and games, so, you know, if I, if I beat you down on something like pool or anything, don't take it personal. You know, it's, it's all fun and love. You know, I even give you a hug and shake hand at the end of the day, but you know, just have a good time, play socially, and just enjoy. And for those who are out in nightlife, just enjoy yourself, be safe, and follow Bomani Tamba. Rules of you know, being out at night and things like that. Um, and you know, all I'm doing is just basically trying to make sure people are safe and that we can account to make sure everybody is good. And all those things, because uh, we always have to have people out when everyone is out, regardless. Uh, so we have other people also on deck to watch, because um, in general, everything with me is about safety. I want to make sure everybody travel with me is in good hands at all time and safe at all times, because I don't want to deal with the liability. And we just want to keep things strong, keep things going as organized and professional as possible. All right, so um, as we go into 26. Bring uh, your flashlight, uh, basic first aid, first aid kit, laxative, Pepto-Bismol, anti-diarrhea, other medicines based on what you're looking to bring or need to bring. Do your research on the safest things. So just another list of those things, and this is called emergency items. Uh, 27, uh, please focus on enjoying yourself and accomplishing your mission. Do not get distracted by others or get caught up by complaining. This is an experience that will have its ups and downs. It's a part of your introduction to Ghana slash Africa. We recommend that you go with the flow and enjoy your time in paradise around the wonderful itinerary that we have put together on this journey of a lifetime. So we're just basically saying that we have a list of people. It's 40 of us and many people are there to do many different things and focus on different aspects. And, you know, so... You know, we just like some people are going to be out at nighttime socializing, some people are not. But, uh, you know, just say, everybody, just enjoy yourself and focus on what you're doing and let other people do their thing and do them, you know, do what they do. And, you know, it's all good. Um, just as long as everybody just stay safe and make sure everything is good. Less distraction, the better. Just like, like our mission is, our mission is to build a community in Ghana and we're going to be safe, stead focused and making sure all of our connections there are important presenting and going through things and making sure we're going through these business business meetings that we'll have this maybe privately about how about this community and things like that. So um definitely trying to stay focused on that and we have our two wonderful tour assistants, Sean Brown and uh Jonathan Hill. So if you have anything to that you want to talk about and I'm not around, definitely reach out to you know, both of them or either one of them and they'll communicate with me but we want to make sure that everybody is good and everybody has the greatest time and if you just need to have any personal conversation about anything it doesn't matter whatever it is you can put us aside and have that conversation with us so we can you know, make sure you're clear about whatever you need answer on all right uh, 28 um, remember to have your yellow card or waiver or just something at the point of entering Ghana uh, you know which is just better than nothing else uh, in case we're asked to show yellow fever or a waiver or something. Now, 29, uh, when you get to a baggage claim in Ghana, just uh, get your free card and put your bags on it. Make sure that you have the, the ticket receipt as far as your baggage receipt um, with you so all the numbers match up on each of your bags. That way, when you get down to security, it could be, you know, they can make sure that it's your bag. More than likely, we won't be able to get money at the money exchange there, so I'm going to work on something where those who need money the night before, the night when we get there and in the morning, we'll work out to get the money exchange. But uh, once you uh, get your bags and everything, you know, you're just going to follow us to the bus and just follow the line and don't let nobody else push your bags. 
and we're going to get everybody ready and organize and make sure everything is accounted for on the bus and then we're going to do a little brief introduction and we're just going to talk about the tour book and let's tell everybody that all the documentation from the full itineraries in the tour book, a lot of valuable information as far as the country is there and we put that together so you have a real authentic book of the tour and not just a piece of paper and we do that so everyone will bring it with them in the morning we'll have the tour bag you put your name on all these things and that is your, your guideline for the book uh, that way no one has to ask the same questions about what we're doing in the morning what we're doing in the evening but at the same time so I'm also saying that all the tour information including the itinerary which is the most important thing right now is on the website that tells us the three full days that we're doing in Accra the three full days in Kumasi and the three full days in Kikos, Almina, all the sites that we're going to go to. And when I write itinerary, we, the goal is to do 100% of all sites. The worst case, maybe one site we don't get to do for whatever purpose or situation. But other than that, um, everything is accomplished on uh, this itinerary. So the main thing is when we say that um, everybody needs to be ready by 8 and the bus is going to leave at 8, 8.30, if it stays a little longer, that's fine, but don't expect it to always stay a little longer. Once you're ready to move off, we're going to move off. For those of you who missed, you can call us, catch up to us, get a taxi, or you can just wait till we return back. And the same thing, too, if you're there at any at any mall, and the thing people like myself don't like about malls, sometimes you're in a mall and you wander off and you're hypnotized, and it's it like something psychological they do at malls, to where people are in malls, and the next thing you know, they're in there for three, four, five, seven hours. And if you meet you know, folks like myself, I don't even want to even go in the mall. I just want to look at the mall and get back on the bus and go. But um, just follow the guidelines for that because we're working on the schedule and we don't want any drama with people getting left at the mall. But if you just don't have to get left at the mall because we're not going to wait for anyone that's trapped in a mall because it's so many places you can be missing at. Uh, so, you know, you just meet us back at the hotel, which is the mall is right is literally about five ten minutes from both hotel and you, you you know from the hotel you can literally the mall is not is just right there so we're staying at the Micklin and it's just a popular hotel location and you're safe to get into transportation with you know a licensed cab driver and everything and you just meet us back there so I'm saying that you know especially for one person that was really wanting a smoothie and it's like if you really want a smoothie just enjoy your smoothie and get your smoothie there and but don't expect us to wait for you and don't get upset with us either this you know so if you if you just that determined when we're saying that don't go because we're about to the bus about to pull off you know so on the bus I'll be as what you have there as your captain and your flight attendant you know, and this the tour guide is just the tour guide no one should follow the tour guide the tour guide is there to tell us about the country and be there in with the, the driver as a part of Sunseekers tours which I've explained to them I want things worked out that way their folks can focus on their job and do an excellent job one driving the bus and one being a tour guide and us running our operation as far as our tour so you know those are the guidelines we have and we're going through and you know, it's 40 of us so we just want folks to go with the flow and enjoy themselves and just communicate when the, if something is not right, rooms are not right, or any issues or rooms. Those things have to be worked out immediately. We don't want anyone to come back and say, uh, all the food was against my diet the whole time. It's like, if you see something wrong, let's stop, let's communicate, let's talk about it, let's make sure everything is good. And that, that's how we complete, you know, in my experience, that's how we complete the best journeys. You know, we make sure everything is good. You know, because many people may have many different ideas of what they look and expect and I don't have an idea of just all of those things we just have a set formation of how we set things up and make sure it's all inclusive of everyone brothers and sisters you know mother father and children to just all be connected you know and you know so that's why videos and everything and itineraries are there for clarity so family this is a very important list and I've gone through all of it and I want to open things up for final questions for the next five minutes. So um, let's press star six to unmute yourself, and I uh, will go through it. All right, Jonathan, I've muted you. I haven't heard from you, so I've muted you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Greetings, family. How's everyone? All right, cool. Just want to uh, check with you. These are the things that we edited. I just went over, for the most part, uh, as it is. Um, for the last 30 points that you and I uh, went over the last few days and worked on here. So just want to make sure yes. 
from you. Was everything clear as we just talked about on the recorded call? Yes, everything is, is clear. Hi, let me know if you want to share anything before we close the next few minutes. Everybody, just uh, again, we're uh, going on this tour to Ghana, and it's going to be a, a fun time. Um, I'm glad to, to finally be a part of it, and um, I'm pretty sure like all the information that um, that you need is is on the tour guide, is uh, within the the website, and you, you could address anything there. Pretty much going to have a good time and uh, meet some of. Uh, our sisters and brothers there on the continent and the fellow people that have repatriated already and it's going to be um, pretty good to go from there. That's excellent. Well, perfect, man. So perfect. Yeah. So let me meet you and I'll open up for some questions. All right, so family, um, the line is open. And it's, um, press star six, unmute yourself, give us your name and where you're calling from, your question. Hey, Bomani. Uh, greetings. Uh, can you give your name? Where you calling from? Your question. Uh, my name is Serena. I'm calling from Alabama, uh, and I just remember when we first started the call that you said that uh, you had been to Senegal. So I was wondering if there was any future trips planned back to Senegal. Uh no, unfortunately, no, not at all. The latest thing I got, Tanzania, Kenya, 2020. And my surmise is not working past that time yet, but um, I'll be looking at it again. Um, but it's just really based on interest and. Okay, and I I I will be um uh, my plan is to go to the Ghana May, um 2019. So I'm really looking forward to that. Absolutely. But that's my only question. Thank you. Oh, perfect. Uh, excellent. I right, tell me the line is open. Um, you can name where you're calling from your question. Uh, it's me again, Edna. Um, concerning investment, um, are we going to have a chance once we uh, get there with the investment to um, purchase land? or how, if, I know you don't have enough time to go into that, but just a little overview a little bit. Yeah, I can explain that right now. That's absolutely fine. Let me put you on mute. Uh, the next person, can you hold uh, from 703 Air Code? All right, um, Edna, I sent uh, you and Sharon, um, and that's, that's only the folks that are traveling with me in May and November. I sent you um, a land site uh, details, um, and it's not in its fullness. I'm just trying to get information out quick, but the dialogue gives, gives you clarity. So what I've set up is November 19th, which is a Monday in Accra, Ghana, uh, at 630, right there at the Mickle Hotel. We have a business conference. So the presentation is going to be given about the community that uh, myself uh, and our folks work with a few different uh, other groups of people to build us an African diaspora community because it's not working out on my own and other things like that. So we've, we've made some great bonds to piece our resources together. To you know, so that's what I begin to start getting out. So it's just I'd have to go there and do some of my own photos and videos along with whatever is going to be provided in a, soon. So that is one uh, project. Uh, when we, once we get a nice introduction there on Monday, the following uh, week, November 26th, when we, uh, that should be our last day in Ghana, we're going to be going to the site itself and you'll see full details of it and you'll get more details. And those who have interest, I'll keep them on a, a unique email list and um, we'll, I'll just explain furthermore, but it's uh, two thousand dollars for a plot of land, and then um, yeah, there's um, maintenance fee and a few things. But uh, it's in that uh, unique dialogue that we we're going to be talking about more so next month, and then definitely when we get to Ghana. All right, so I have a caller from um, area code seven zero three last four six six nine zero. You're unmuted. Yeah, that, give your name and where you're calling. Yeah, this is. Yeah, Carl J. Hughes, Washington, D.C. And my question was about um, the email you sent out about the investment uh, tour and the 50 plots. Um, and um, I've, I've got, uh, I guess, several questions concerning uh, uh, or questions about things that were stated in that. But the first one will kind of, uh, I guess, uh, may 
kind of resolve part of it. Uh, so it's the, for the plots, now are they only going to be available uh, during the investment tour? Not so much. Um, you know, we're trying to make sure everything is clear before we even publicly put it out, but the land is available as of in the next week or so for us to put our money down on it. So I have the, I'm looking okay. to finalize a few things before we actually put, a few of us have already put our money together and we'll make sure everything is good and get it organized. We just want to make sure everything is simple for people that way, because sometimes these things can get confused and, and I don't want to lose anybody. So that's why mm -hmm. it's, just, it's not even specifically sent out to everyone yet. But, um, Okay. We're, you know, and I send it out to everyone that's traveling with us because it's, it's on our itinerary for both tours where the people that are part of that, um, the main people, um, they'll present and then a week later we'll share and show. And then as it, you know, as it builds up, we'll you know, do more and more to just connect people and give more and more people idea of this and make it work. Okay, okay. Uh, will they only be available for those who are on the tour or Oh, no, no, no. It's others available outside? from uh, our brothers and sisters from the African diaspora and the African continent. Okay. Looking to be a part okay. of and, and more so um, working a strategy to where we have a, a generation of people that's looking to retire and people like myself is trying to be <laughs> that, that force to this market, the energy of uh, folks retiring in Africa and being in a secure environment and being safe and also a situation where their money can go long and they actually have money left over after, you know, in, the, in this case, in the government, just take everything you have and leave you broke for 30 days. Right. In this case, you're right. going to go right. towards a community and you have your, you know, your money left to spend and do whatever, but it's a gradual setup of how you pay for your home, pay for the infrastructure you're going to be living at and things like that. So, it's something that we're ingeniously just working together to put it together where it works for all of us, the masses of the people, and exemplify a situation where if we're looking to leave from America and we want to live in Africa, we, our money is put together like corp, in a more of a corporate economics. It's kind of like if the black church decides to put their money together and build something in Africa, you know, bam, it's done, you know, it, it, and they recycle their money. So those are the things that the way we can develop projects and develop the things that we're looking for as a people on the African continent. So you have to just put all resources of people together to make it a true community and make it work. So that's kind of like what we're talking about. And as it grows, you know, we just expand and expand it. And as far as the building up, what needs to be built and up, put up, technologically it's just us as a people doing our own thing. So I don't have a bunch of outsiders. It's just everything is internal. And people like myself were paranoid about spies and about crazy people and stuff like that. So everything with us is about family and security and us working together and us keeping what we're doing focus point. Okay. And I know that uh, you, it stated in the, the email that um, four plots max per person. Does that also include, uh, would that, if, if there were spouses on the trip, does that include per household, if you will? Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky situation. Um, and, and personally, I would put one plot per person, and then let everybody in the family get a plot. Uh, but it's about the same, uh, four plots per family. Okay, okay. It, like that's what I, was, I plan on doing. I plan on this one, one of three other family members of mine getting a plot each, and, and mm -hmm. then along with a few of us who basically piecing our resources together and not separating ourselves from the rest of the community. Just we know each other, and we just using our resources and trying to encourage for people to do the same thing to to where, you know, you're building communally and you see the community being built evenly, not one person build a house and they live in like in a mansion, the other person, people just not building their house. So it's a community where we're going to have the conversation about it, especially when we get to the business conference and talk about how we just work together as a true community because that's what we do. We're trying to be a good example uh, for people in the African diaspora who people say that we can't build these communities in Africa, we can't work together, we don't like each other, we don't work together. The black people in Africa is going to cause problems and the ray, 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 and the this and the that, and all kind of the drama. But it's something that we can do, and it's something that we have exemplified that we can really do, and this is the best set of people I've, you know, I've assembled and organized around. And, you know, when you go through this drama of many things that have gone wrong and you have seen it, you realize... You know, so I begin to take leadership on on work in certain angles to make sure that 
we just have something nice and organized, and that's the, you know, and once we build one of these, then we'll have the skills and talents to do more of this because the, the, the continent of Africa got nothing but land, and it's a great right. opportunity to just do these things and then be more sustainable with how we live our lives and more meaningful to and not so much just sucking in the sun on the planet. So it's just a lot of going off our, you know, growing food trees and just make it as plush as possible. My ex-Marine brothers, you know, they're ready to take posts. You know, they're ready to secure the perimeter. So I'm excited about it. You know, because that's one of the things that people like myself have stayed here for a long duration because I just never really have all the elements of things. You know, it's a, you know, a dream come true for many of us and uh, for those who are just open to assist and be a part of the future, we just tell them, come on, you know, at this, right, at this point, you know, most of us that are connected now are just on similar pages and that's the good thing about building something, you know, building a special operation there in Africa. It's the people who just really have the desire to want to live and do business in Africa that you're going to meet with. I'll definitely be working on providing more and more details. Okay, and I know that there's a I know that there's another community uh, in the the, uh, the Brong Ahafo region that there was supposed to be this village or a, a diasporan community. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, and I imagine that's probably still happening, but yeah, this is I mean, something yeah, new. It's, my, it's, my, it's one of my projects. Uh, that's on the, yeah, that's why I'll be pushing. That's what I push out. Push out with repatriation project. Yeah, that land. Uh, we've got uh, nine uh, nine plots of land. Um, and right now, two has been sold already, so there's seven plots of land up there. Maybe it'll still use for farming and certain things. But right now, this community in Goma that I sent you, it's mm-hmm. where I've gotten the most support. Um, it's been rough up trying to get support for people to move up there with us and build up there and work on our future. So it's a project that's dying. Uh, so we're just recy- recycling the resources and put it in this project. That way, we'll have our business okay. office there set up. will be a better repatriation community efforts to help the rest of us that want to live and do business and work with the rest of us that are looking to create factories and create um, economical resources to where you can do the things you want to do. And then the good thing about it, you're in a good location. It's two hours away from Accra and it puts you mm-hmm. access to more things of convenience and business. Uh, so people that you're looking to invest in the projects and looking to move with you and deal with you makes it more, make them more at ease and feel better by being by. So it has changed the game completely, and for those who were slow to move with us on that move to Benin Village, it has like revived them. You know, so okay. it's something that uh, we look to just really just put down in place, make it look real good in the next two to five years as we begin to move from this part of the world to the next. The things that I, people like myself always have to worry about is uh, things that you, you naturally call like a cell a cell tower, um, an internet a cell slash internet tower. We you have your highest level of communication as far as phone and as far as internet. Uh, so mm-hmm. all those things have to be looked at and things like that. So that's the, you know, so those are begin to be those things where you're not at, you know where our movements are still looking for the best location and to build those things that we need. So it's a nice future plan that's you know that looking at coming better to fruition than at any time ever. Okay. Okay. And 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 have you? Uh, I, I guess do you have? Uh, I guess a building crew uh, already identified for that area in particular. So will we kind of be like standard, uh, or kind of the same construction, if you will, throughout the community? Or yeah, absolutely. Everything is internal. Everything we have is our own people. And like I was saying, it's a secret thing about security and things like that. And people like myself, it's not the country is not dangerous, but people like myself, right, right. Like, so everyone has got to be people we know and people we trust and people and certain things. And you know, I got my guys ready to supervise and manage and, and keep their eye out and got spies on the deck and all kind of stuff. Uh, so, because, okay. uh, you know, when things don't go wrong, when things go wrong, the finger get pointed at me. It's like, oh, it's more money for right. So I have, to, right. you know, I have to make sure people are safe and everything is good with people, money and things like that. So this got to get to the point where I have to go to and connect with everybody and be clear. And go through things as professional as possible because um, well, what I like myself is in my heart to make sure that this never happened again is the failure of a project called Fianca in the Eastern Region, um, mm-hmm. which has been a disgrace and unbelievable. You know, cause, but you know we never get these these chances all the time to really build certain things. So I'm taking it serious and I'm talking to my partners and people and then I tell them that 
I'm bringing a vital resource to this operation, and we have to make sure that this, this runs as organized and professional as possible and that uh, refuse to be a part of unorganization, unprofessionalism, not trying to bully and tell people how to run it, their own affairs and everything, but all of us have equal amount of investments in these things, including people that's looking to purchase land and everything. Right. I use that as a fourth. So to answer your question, absolutely. And um, people like myself and other people, you know, like um, that maybe have the professional and sustainable living, we have other experts we learn from, and then we teach each other and things I'm expert at, you know, vice versa, I train and share with people, uh, especially when it comes to networking and wiring the building and setting it up for you know, technology operation. And that's, and then some people and I do other things outside of that. So I think that's, it's a good feel to where we can share and connect with each other. Okay, and so I know that it's, it's zoned for residential, uh, specifically for residential. Absolutely. Does that include uh, does that include like apartment building type? Yes, yeah, that's residential. Maybe you do um, a small mm -hmm. townhouse or two, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. two four houses. I'll, I'll get with you offline because uh, okay, I'll, I'll let you know about some of the things that I'm doing and, and it kind of ties in. That's why I'm asking all these questions. So uh, you might be interested in it. You may not, you may not be, but uh, it's all good. We'll chat. Oh, absolutely, Carl. Perfect. We appreciate you. So what we do is uh, you and I will connect on between tonight and tomorrow and then we'll just talk about it. And so family, um, what um, Carl and I was talking about was uh, the 50 plots of land in Goma, uh, which is right above Senior Barracoo. For those who have seen Senior Barracoo footage, it's right above the uh, main road, and it's a beautiful access to this an incredible community that's going to be built. Um, the floor plans and even the layout of the community, all those things will be available soon. I'll be working with our folks there and everything, and we're looking to connect people to the Black Star Line Credit Union for those who are looking to get accounts, and we'll be able to just, uh, provide you with more details. My family, I uh, don't want to keep anyone longer than we're supposed to. Um, got by a little bit on time and went through more, you know, went to the list at a slower pace than usual. My family, that's all the details right there on our website, africaforafricans.org. And um, for those who have any last minute questions, you can just ask, real, ask your question. And then uh, we'll close in a minute or two. All right, perfect family. So everybody appreciate your energy and your time and um we'll get things going for you for next conference call, which is a little earlier than others. But uh we're looking for the next conference call November fourth, uh which is about um and basically uh, three weeks from today. Uh so um we'll just go to a few basic things and everything will be basically set for questions and, and it's the same details are going over. But uh, for those who are traveling us uh, next month, um, it's an earlier call for that reason, and we'll, that way everybody can focus on getting finalized. And for those who are meeting in Atlanta or live in the Atlanta area, I'll send you an email for us to meet up uh, for, you know, for maybe about two hours, and I'll give out the tour book, the T-shirts, the tour bags, and all those uh, things, and you at least have an early preparation. And then everybody else, I'll see you at the airport, and I'll get the information to you. So, family, uh, everyone, good night. Once again, this is Bomani Tamba, your tour organizer and tour leader on the journey of a lifetime. You're talking to everybody. Look forward to connecting with everybody coming up on the next few uh, journey of a lifetime. And if anyone want to meet me or come in, or in the state, you can just always reach out to me, connect with me. You can also meet here at a place of business. Uh, but, family, we're available uh, seven days a week. So reach out to me and uh, let me get you started on the journey of a lifetime. All right, everybody. Good night. Enjoy your night. Take care. All right. Good night. Hey. Good night. Good night. Hey, good morning. Delaware. All right, greetings, uh, Teresa. Absolutely. Uh, so everything is ready for our wonderful journey to Ghana. Not so South Africa, excuse me, South Africa. South Africa. Peace and blessings. Yes, ma'am. Talk to you next month. Okay. Peace.